what's happening you guys so we got a little bit of rain going on today and um, it's funny that I'm making a video in the rain because a friend of mine, and as long as I'm telling the fucking story, I'm going to tell it like this. She's a friend of mine. And um, her thing was uh, linked to the rain. So I'm going to dedicate this show to her. Whenever she watches, she'll know who she is. Not my twin, but um, my friend. So the thing is that we've got this shift coming. And I wasn't really planning on making another video before then, but I'm guided to, so I'll, I'll heed the call. I have a nice day today. It's like 55 degrees right now this morning in Georgia. The birds are chirping. It's a little overcast, as you can see, and I got a light drizzle, but I'm well prepared for that situation. And I'm well prepared for walking in the rain whenever I'm hiking, so it's not something I haven't done. I might even tap into some energies I haven't been able to tap into in the recent times. So, I personally have been going through these, these shifts that really since the first of the year, since New Year's Eve, um, have kind of hit me. And acclimating to these energies and acclimating to say the the twin flame dynamic something that we all have to run into right so whenever your twin flame comes into your life they're going to create a bit of chaos if you will things are going to be a little different than what you're used to look my little friends are trying to get away hey little friends those are fellers looks at them Geese are actually pretty cool and very social with you once you, you know, start to talk with them and what have you. They're thinking they're going to get some food or what have you sometimes and they'll just come after you. Especially when Waffles isn't around. But the, um, the thing about your twin coming into your life and then these certain shifts like January 31st, it's, it's kind of like going through puberty. Not like you you're you know horny and what have you <laughs> but it's more inclined to the changes and the the like complete shifts so you know and for me for instance instead of going around playing with transformers i wanted to go and play with my little man it's it's one of those things like fuck transformers and at this stage in life you're you're going through much of the same kind of situation you guys it's like you, all of the things that you're used to that society has programmed you into being your life in a sense the matrix if you will is all abruptly starting to shift and change and that's what's taking place right now much like when you were in puberty you were a little kid you dressed a certain way within a year or two you were like a completely new fucking person and that's what's going on now. That's what happened with your twin. Um, just imagine how, how hard it was for you to go through those changes. And, and how your friends, that when you were a kid, you know, were different than when you were a teenager. And how all of these things started to shift. That's more or less what you're supposed to expect during this time frame okay during this this event if you will this bit of chaos one thing i did want to get out there before i got off subject and started talking about um everything else whenever whenever you're a twin whenever you're an empath you have the ability to see through people, to see through their bullshit, to see through what they want people to see. And the thing is, I have pushed all the people away that I have essentially wanted to not push away. Even like the best of, of like us out there, you know, I, I'm able to see into them to a point where they're even like, okay, this is fucking too weird for me. When, when I personally go, have gone through this experience, I haven't gone through it with boundaries, 
you guys. I've wanted to push things as far as I can venture out and, and get into these situations where, where I just have to accept that I have gone too far and, and my limits only go to a certain point. Now, I understand that outside of this human body that I could reach well beyond what the human mind and the human body, and I'm not supposed to even know that stuff. All of us are starting to get that concept, right? But you and I, in this, that's essentially eating the apple in the Garden of Eden, if you will. We aren't supposed to know this stuff, but after we have gone through the stage for thousands of years, you guys, we're, we're, we're taking that next level. We're supposed to have been these angelic beings running around not going through these these questions or these journeys and experiences it was in our place to do that but we have essentially created an anomaly here we're outside of the norm in in planet earth i may have to sit somewhere else because this particular tree is going to drip water all over me motherfucker you know what Let's go over here in the grass instead. Yeah, you're questioning yourself. You're like, why is Brian worried about the water dripping on him when he's sitting in the fucking rain anyways? Look, I'm a fucking weird guy. I have my reasons. There. Now, a consistent, steady, light drop is more tolerable than huge drops coming off of a fucking gumball, if you will. So, that's, that's my reasoning. I also have other weird things like I don't like my my corn mixed in with my mashed potatoes. I will put like some meat, say say my Thanksgiving meal has some corn, has some mashed potatoes, has some peas or you know what have you. What I will do is create a barrier in between those with some meat like my turkey and ham. Bam. Now I can create a barrier in there and what I'll do is as I eat my piece of ham you know I'll eat some of that mashed potatoes that's near the corn so there's there's this weird way that I do things and that that keeps me me moving along through my daily routine without being bored without having I don't know little things that bother me like getting some of my mashed potatoes and having corn in there you know it's not to the point where I wouldn't eat it but I would be let's just say I would enjoy that meal and consuming it a lot more if it was all done exactly the way that I envisioned it and pictured it and that's how we are in in this world as a human being we want everything done the way that we want it done and whenever it's not, we run into these temper tantrums. Like when we were a kid, we used to, no, I want it this way. Nowadays that we're adults, we get angry. We, we, we get stressed out. We, we have to go and take fucking whatever medicines you guys take. Now that's the thing about, about having all of these feelings. A lot of doctors and moms and, and grandmas and family members, they, they, they think that the best thing to do is go and drug the folks up. You know, here, take some of these medicines. That'll make you feel better, you know? It, fuck all that. Get outside in the rain. Go sit in the grass in the sunshine. Go and do what makes you happy. That's what's gonna be critical. So during these shifts, when you're feeling like you're going through these changes, and I feel them too, I'm like, damn, why can't I just feel like I'm touching everything and it's turning to gold again? I felt like it was the fifth dimension. Like, then boom, the fucking year starting to change, and now it's, man, I'm stuck back here in the 3D again. And what we're doing at this stage is pushing the whole planet and the folks that are going to essentially go to the new earth it's it's kind of funny it's kind of funny how this is starting to work out I didn't really see the picture beforehand and now I'm starting to see how you have two worlds happening in the same time and they're starting to to separate at this stage and what we're doing is going through that separation so there's a part of us that is dying 
in all honesty. A part of us is dying and we're having to let it go. And we're having such a problem letting it go, which is why we're going through all of this this anguish and feeling like, <clears throat> like we're losing our twin again for some reason. We have to step through the door on our own and either walk into our twin's arms waiting there on the other side or be the one that stands there at the terminal waiting for them to walk through the doors on the other side. <laughs> That's what's happening right now. Through this transition and through the rest of the year, 2018, all the way through the you know end of the summer into the fall. Yeah, that's what it's all about, you guys. So, being out here in the rain, is a bit, I don't know, it's a bit of a change, a bit of something new. And the thing that, that I, I want to do in life is never fall in a routine. So I'm also really weird about that, you know, you, you say, okay, Brian, you just told us about your fucking food, that sounds a lot like routine, but I don't do that every time, that's like when I have a big plate of food, I eat all kind of different stuff, I eat a bunch of finger foods, you know, that have everything mixed up like burritos, it's not like I have a fucking phobia with mixed up food, it's just there's certain ways that I like to do things. So... When it comes to um, your, your daily routines, like waking up in the morning, some people have to put their socks on, you know, a foot in, in a particular sock, like their left side, before they do their right side, and then put their shoes on, and then tie their, like in a certain way. Now, I personally, I do the exact opposite. I switch it up. Whenever I think about like, hey, how am I putting my shoes on? I'm going to change it to a way that I, I haven't done in a while or what have you. I'll put my sock on first and then I'll put my shoe on. Then I'll put my other sock on and then my shoe on. Put both my socks on and then I'll put both my shoes on. Switch right to left. Do, do, do it all different, you know? That may seem eccentric, it may seem fucking off the wall, but it, it keeps you fresh, it keeps you changing up. So you may sleep at one side of the bed at one point in time. Now if you have a king size bed, that's a lot better to fucking be moving around the bed. And if you want to change your, you know, your routine around, fucking move your pillows to the other side of the bed. Move your pillows <laughs> to the foot of the bed. Flop them around at times. You know, wear wear different outfits that you otherwise haven't worn for a long period of time. Do things differently. Then you're not stuck in a routine. You're, you're not used to doing the same thing over and over again. Now in life you're going to have things happen differently all the time. So you're going to have less chance of being worked up and, and having these anxieties when you take these steps into the new realm. You know, like my twin for instance. There's a lot of things that a Virgo has to have, you know, in place. I I have dated plenty of Virgos, a good six or seven of them have been in my life really close, okay? So close enough to me to understand there are certain Virgo traits that are really hard to get away from. Now, the cool thing is my twin was never really like that major OCD where everything had to be in a certain place with the most of of life but there's still certain things and even for me like I'm still OCD about certain things but I'm not pushing it and that's another thing about Scorpio Scorpios you know are a bit OCD in certain things and they're also really good detectives so putting things together is has always come naturally for me one thing about that that you know you guys can look this up Scorpios you would think that, say, there's only roughly 8, 8.4, 8.5% of the detectives in America, or we'll even say the world, are Scorpios. That's, that's the average, you know, 12 signs, roughly 8.4, 8.5%. Now, you're going to have roughly a third of anybody in the detective field um, is going to be a Scorpio. We just, we're naturally 
inclined to problem solve, to, to find the answers, find truths. We are truth seekers. So every Scorpio is going to be in some kind of, of truth seeking type of business, if you will. Some kind of, of, of figuring things out, problem solving, something of, to that effect. The cool thing about this whole astrology thing, you know, it all sounds like a bunch of crazy nonsense, but the number 12 has always resonated with me, and I've always been a big freak with the number 12. Any of my friends or family, and they're like, what the fuck is with you and the number 12? But if you look at how significant the number 12 is, and in denominations of the number 12, and it just so happens that there's 144,000 of us light workers on the planet right now doing our thing, a denomination of 12. So all of these things have always resonated with me. And a lot of these goofy spiritual things that have been around for thousands of years have really started falling in line. So you can see how some things have been altered in order to, in a sense, create a matter of control, a means of control for the people that are in control at that time. Those people have set up a structure in order to keep you, the normal human being, that's not going out and seeking the truths that you otherwise need to in control. The, the shift is happening now where there's been enough of us that has created an atmosphere to, to push forward that, that paradigm. So all the while, I'm not supposed to be stepping on people's toes or pushing that envelope or pushing things to the extreme. You know, I've been pushing the people away all my life and there's yet a handful that are around that like that's just Brian I love him for who he is and damn I'm so fucking blessed to have those people in my life thank you you guys thank you for that <laughs> most definitely thank you I love you and I take them for granted sometimes but I've done a hell of a lot better job over the last few years making sure that everyone knows how I feel about them and that I care about them. There's still some more folks that I need to do a lot better job and every day I'm trying to better myself. Every day you guys need to try to better yourself. My twin is out there experiencing life, you guys, in, in a whole new perspective. Right now, she's running around my old stomping grounds, which is interesting. So this whole duality and time paradigm, I want to explain a little bit more about my story and why this all just synchronicities is so sweet, right? So my, my father's side of the family is from America's Georgia, right next to Plains by Jimmy Carter. My grandma and my family actually, you know, associated with Jimmy Carter. I won't go too far into that. Believe it or not, my mother's, uh, fam my mother's, my, my daughter's mother's family is related to Rosalind Carter. So we're all in, in, in there, yada yadas. And my bloodline essentially goes back with all of these fucking same bloodlines that are inclined to rule the world, rule you guys. All it takes is one of us to speak out for you to really understand what's going on, okay? Some of us... I've never been a part of the team. I've never been, you know, in, in that clique. I've never been one of the guys. I've never been anything like that. I've always been off doing my own thing. And society has always wanted me to not be that four-year-old kid that finds it acceptable to sit in the rain. You know? Imagine my neighbor sitting around. Who's that fucking guy sitting out there in the rain? Oh yeah, that's that Brian guy. <laughs> Imagine all of the people that, you know, might have seen me walking around in the rain when I was a kid. I fucking love walking around in the rain guys walking around in the snow is a lot better because walking around in the snow doesn't get you all wet it's kind of like that beastie boys thing you know wouldn't you like to go outside and play basketball in the rain and not get wet i've always loved that <laughs> hell yeah i would it's called the snow but 
there's little things that that I still do to this day that remind me of my childhood, like riding riding the grocery cart in the um, the aisles as as you're getting out of the the store. You know, you, you fucking jump on it and kick it a couple times as you're going and ride that shit to your car. Go and jump in a puddle. You know. Go and uncover some rocks. If you see a new critter, a new animal, go over there and see what it's all about. <laughs> I've always been much more Socrates and Aristotle than I've been Plato. And I know I've referenced Plato and I'm and, and I'm in love with all the Greek philosophies, philosoph philosophers <laughs> and the, the the Roman Greco era and even more so the the Norman invasions, you know, the, the Vikings. I, I have resonance in all of that because I've lived in those lifetimes. I've, I feel when I was a healer during the, the 800s, I was healing my, my fellow brethren as Jesus would have done and I was labeled a heretic because I was more of the Gnostic faith than the Roman Catholic version and they took my hands from me. They cut my hands because I was healing by means of the devil. You know, I've had all of these situations come back to me. These dreams like, what in the fuck happened there? Woo! Freaking the fuck out. Like, all oh, my hands. Yay. You know, and I was told this one time and, and it triggered those dreams in my life. Other dreams, you're much like, like I said in other videos, the Avatar. You start tapping into these previous lives and some of them are awesome. The reason I understand that this particular lake that my twin and I in this life are so drawn to is because a life when we were first people, we were natives, we lived near the lake. And there's only a handful of times where I have gotten to, to live a long, enjoyable life with my twin that I've seen in my dreams, and that was one of them. More often than not, it's interesting. We, we, we have our twins in our lives and we don't get to enjoy them for very long in the past. And that's another thing that we are going through. You know, we go through these anxieties that we have to lose our twins and find them again. And in this life, you know, that push-pull dynamic, we still are feeling it on a, on a lower level, but we have gone through so many lives where we haven't even had them in that life experience. You know, they were actually still in the astral helping us through that particular life. And it's, dude, I've never, I used to never believe in this whole angels and, 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 prayers and all the other but there's a lot of science scientific value in it you know when you when you talk to water and you talk nice to water it, it brings a positive effect opposed to a negative effect when you talk bad to it and what have you we're mostly water so when you when you say grace for instance at the table you're talking positive to your food and water that you're about to consume and otherwise nourish your body so of course when you give it a positive influence it's going to have a positive effect on your body it's all science, but when you read it in the Bible in the context that it is, and there's also, like I said, people going along trying to push their ideals and what have you in the whole thought process. So you have to be a bit discerning with these things. You have to find what resonates with you and what does it. And when you look at the grand scheme of things, when you look at all of these different religions that are saying the same thing, you can have this... this resonant this use your discernment on it and it all creates a picture for you a picture that gives you confirmation things happen in your life like you're walking through life you have a show that happens you run into a group of friends that are telling you a story that resonates with what's going on in your life at that time that may give you the answers a friend may simply just give you the back on the fucking head smack that you needed all of those things may take place in your life to give you the answers, but ultimately only you can decide what is truth, what is your truth, what is your path. Once you walk that path, you've accepted that that's your truth, that's you. 
you've created a paradigm that is now your timeline. So all of us are creating this timeline. All of us are walking this path. We need to co-create and not just let everyone around us co-create for us. That's what this shift is all about. That's what blood moons and blue moons are all about. Happening together is a freak occurrence, you guys. The Mayans would have been freaking out over this shit. They would have been like rolling some heads down the fucking pyramids. <laughs> Cuckoo Khan would have got his fair share of blood that day. Oh, so, <clears throat> hopefully a little bit of my rants gave you guys some kind of uh, views on what's happening. The thing with me is I don't, sh I don't know exactly how to translate this information still. I'm still gathering it up and trying to feed it to you guys in a palatable manner. Th ways that you couldn't really... I don't know just come out and say in in a, in a in a way you have to say it in certain poetry for people to I don't know to trigger so trying to speak that language is hard sometimes you guys trying to come in and figure out how to take quantum energy and bring it down here to a linear state is fucking mind warping so the last few weeks has been just it's, it's been wrecking my fucking mind. <laughs> uh, it, trying to sleep, trying to figure out my daily routine and work. That's why I do the things that I do. That way, that way I'm able to to snap the fuck out of it when I get into these stage stages. So if you guys are going through these transitions where it's like, man, this energy is intense. Man, this energy is feeling multidimensional. It almost feels like, you know, somebody slipped me a fucking Mickey, you guys. If you're feeling that way, you need to... You mean to kind of ground. The way that I ground is fucking walking the rain, you know? It's kind of hard to go off in the la-la land when you're fucking walking in the rain. You're also doing goofy shit like this, like carrying around some new might. Now this is new might. It's one of the things that is grounding me. It's three, four billion year old rock, essentially, a crystal. One of the oldest crystals on the planet. And it is a grounding stone. So you carry those things around. Also, I've got my turkosite. Another good grounding stone. Bringing us back to the, uh, to the place where we resonate most at. Get to those stages. Remember the places that you were at when you were a kid. Remember those things that bring you back to, to, to you. You know, the thing that's interesting, so this is science right here, you guys. Science will blow your fucking mind. A human being recreates every cell roughly every seven, even 12 years. So certain cells in your body will stay there and live essentially up to 12 years. Once again, this fucking anomaly number 12. But more often than not, all of your cells are essentially going to reproduce and be a different cell every seven years. So with that in mind, your whole body has, in a sense, changed itself over most likely at least two or three times if you're watching this video. There's not really anybody that's, you know, youngins that are watching this. So one would say your body has been reproduced at least two or three times at this stage on up to even five now those same memories are there all the way through you're like how in the fuck does that happen where are those memories coming from guess what they're coming from the cloud the akash so you tap in all of this this data if you will into the akash the same thing with your past lives you tap that into the akash <laughs> so as you go through your life 
whenever you want that information, boom, tap back into the Akash, bring it back down. And it's much like your, say your iPods, we'll, 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 we'll liken this to iPods. This is once again, I'm trying to explain to you guys quantum in a linear state. We, we are the devices and we only have so much room to download data onto, right? Some of us are, you know, going to be fucking 16 gigs and some of us are going to be fucking 270 gigs. You know, some of us are going to be fucking like stellar able to hold out all the information. Those are your geniuses. Those are the ones that tap into the fucking Akash on a random basis and change things out on a random basis or not on a random basis on a... Mm, now I'm fucking got a brain block. <laughs> a consistent basis. That's what I'm trying to say. Whew. So, whenever you're, you're in a sense tapping into these energies, tapping into this information, what you're doing is re-downloading information from the Akash. You know, your past lives are in there. All this information comes in there. And if you don't really understand, like, how to, to... It's not as simple as you going in and downloading a movie. Click. You know, you've got all this information that's all scattered around. And none of us have fucking done anything about as far as putting them in categories or, you know... Especially me. You know, like I said, I'm not OCD. Think I've ever been OCD in any of my price past lives no i just fucking throw out everything all sporadic and random trying to find that shit is is crazy but the cool thing is is i'm able to tap into it and get these random downloads that's like whoo that was fucking a trip but anyways that's what's going on in y'all's lives at this stage you're going through these chaotic experiences because you're you're having these dreams from past lives you're having these energies from past lives you're having the akash tap in and you're you're having quantum come into a linear mind and essentially change it alter it bring it up to a quantum level and when you go through that like i said it's like going through puberty you're going through the next stage in evolution and you're going to have crazy situations happen so, enjoy those times, go out there and ground, walk in the rain, remember what it's like to be a kid, you know, and, and think about what I said, when you have your body consistently changing over new cells, you know, that just means that it's, it's a vehicle, right? It, it's something that isn't you, you are something entirely different than this body, and once you realize that, you're going to become quantum because you are living quantum you're not living linear this body is linear and when you live in the mind that's linear when you live in the heart that's quantum that's why the egyptians were so big on the heart i love you guys take care peace out hang loose guys so i just got back home and it dawned on me that i got into the middle of a tangent about my story and i didn't give you any kind of like I don't know, I, I got into the little bit of the beginning of it, so let me finish up with that, and I'll go ahead and tie that into this video for today. Homeboy Wild Rose, he's going to come out here and play in the rain with us a little bit out in the yard. So, the thing while I was talking about with, say, my family being linked into Jimmy Carter, what have you, is I was born in 1980. And when you go back in history, you look at the stage where I was born, it was right there uh, in November at the time of the election. So the cool thing is being linked on one side of the states. Um, my father was over there, you know, in California in the Navy at the stage. He was coming from the point where Jimmy Carter, hometown essentially, and was the governor of Georgia, the current president of America, going to America where essentially you had Ronald Reagan, which was the governor of California, where I was essentially being born. Now guess who became the president right at that stage as I was born? It created a time shift when I came into this world. So when, when you see these, these jumping timelines, 1980 was a critical state. And again, 1987-1988. There's some more stories I'll tell you about that in further uh, videos, but once again, had some other stuff going on there. Now, every eights, the eights, 
seem to be something. That's why I know that 2018 is going to be another big transitional year. 2007, 2008, guess what happened? Another fucking big transitional year. Guess what? 1998, another big transitional year. So as you've progressed through 1980, 88, 98, 2008, 2018, there have been consistent changes in steps in progression. So what I have gotten my my story has linked me into things that resonate with what have been going on in the timeline in order to explain to me, okay, this shit is for real. I can trust what's happening because I I have all of these different synchronicities happen to me. The whole 2012, December 21st, 2012, it was written on the calendar for so long. That is such a significant date for me personally and my twin. I've told you guys a little bit about that story, but <laughs> it's interesting how all of these significant dates keep adding up. So once again, January 31st, 2018 resonates with me being another significant date. So I'm trying to put as much information about like all this fucking energies that are coming in that is really hard to dictate. Now, all of you guys are going to have these crazy synchronicities. And you once called them coincidences when they were happening at that time. But when you look back through your whole life, you have all of these synchronicities that will line up with certain events that have happened in the world. Now, when that takes place, you have your confirmation. The society around you is trying to convince you of one thing, but you know that that one thing doesn't resonate with you. Something else is happening. My twin, I, I fell in love with the fact that she was able to bring that out of me and make me feel that that's okay. That was the one person that I've ever encountered in this life that has made me feel like it is okay for all of those crazy things that I would otherwise not say anything to anyone anyone, let alone put them on a motherfucking YouTube video <laughs> for anyone to see across the whole world. Now, that's what happens when you meet your twin and you go through this stage. It's like, it's like going through puberty. It's like, you know, as a little kid, you would never just go off and do certain things. But when you go through puberty, it's like, ah, I can do anything. Boom! Your fucking hormones are raging. You're getting pushed into directions you've never felt before. All of these things are happening. Now, when you've got two people going through those situations, guess what's going to happen? Conflicts. There's going to be things that people are going to do. You know, and think about there's times where you've had relationships, right? Where you haven't done anything and someone's just had a bad day and they end up creating a conflict just because they've had a bad day. Now, think about these kind of things happening. Put yourself in your twin shoes and understand that's what's going on with them. Give them some credit. Give them some love and support. If you really love them, forgive them. If they've said mean things and hurt your feelings, forgive them. Give them a fucking big hug in the astral. Say, you know what? I love you. I'm sorry that I was a fucking prick and pushed you away. You had a bad day. You were reaching out for love and attention and I didn't support you in the way that you needed because... Because you didn't ask in the way that I needed. So ultimately, I was at fault there because I was putting a stipulation on my love. you supposed to have asked me a particular way. And, and that's ultimately what's coming down to it, you guys. Whenever we p create these barriers and divisions between people, it's not them that are at fault. Because we are in control of our lives, not them. So if you put them in control, then it's their fault. So keep that in mind. If you're making somebody's something that's happening in your life their fault, then they're in control of their your life, not you. Which I don't accept. I don't accept that anyone is in control of my life. The thing is, that's what fucks with our minds because fate, fate is out there. Fate is roughly this God's plan, this energy, this resonance that we're supposed to follow. And we have all of these chaotic hot timelines because we are trying to create our own fate, if you will. Now, of course, we can do that or we can just accept our fate and run along our plan that was supposed to come to us. All of this chaos is in order for us 
to enjoy the experience, to have the experience. We are out here having this experience. We cannot have this experience at any time we want, but we continue to choose to go out and have that experience. So that's what it's all about, you guys. Enjoy your experience. Go out and create. Go out and, and accept that it's not their fault because they're not in control of your life. You are in control of your life. All the crazy little synchronicities that happen in our lives are there in order to prove things are the way that they're supposed to be. It may not have been the way that you wanted it to happen, but guess what? It's the way that it was supposed to happen. It's the way that fate made it happen. And if you don't accept that that's the way that it's supposed to happen, then why did it happen the way that it did? It's obviously the way it's supposed to happen. It happened that way, dummy. I love you guys. P that was my PS. I don't have anything else to say on the PPS. I just wanted to come back because I it, it ran to me that that synchronicity. I kind of got on it, and that's one of those cool things that I've never shared with you guys. That the president came from a family tie in Georgia, where I have ties to and linked to at the time. And then as I was coming into the world, you know, the the president of that state or the the governor of that state became the president as I'm coming into the world. <laughs> it's fucking pretty awesome. And and I had that dream one time. And that's well, that's these dreams that you have take place that give you these synchronicities and these dreams, you know, like about the crazy shit about my fucking hands that, that freaked me the fuck out one night. But as I was able to develop and grow, I understand why I'm having these dreams, what's really taking place here. So if you guys have any questions on any of this crazy shit, I've lived such... A fucking crazy life at this stage and and have been able to accept it because I don't know I enjoy it I enjoy pushing the envelope it's it's extreme it's just as fucking enjoyable as as jumping off a cliff of 90 foot into some water you know when I when I was a kid that's what I did BAM I love that shit it gave me thrills I love you guys take care <laughs>